What's up guys, CJ here and welcome back to another all new hybrid network video, this time taking a look at the DCU and the question of Matt Reeves upcoming Batman film and really his whole Batman trilogy and why those movies being prequels would be the best option for the DC film universe. If you've been following Hybrid Network for, wow, almost exactly a year now, you know that we've covered this Ben Affleck story since the beginning. And to catch you up, if you don't remember how this all started, you know, last year during San Diego Comic-Con, The Hollywood Reporter broke a story that Affleck was burnt out on the DCEU and wanted to leave the role, and that WB was actually making future plans without him. Fast forwarding a year, past the lukewarm response to Justice League and the hiring of Matt Reeves for this new Batman trilogy, we still don't know where we stand with regards to Affleck and his status in the DCEU. That's right, 349 days have passed since the story broke, and nothing has changed. But barring a major shift, the feeling around the community is that Affleck is done, and that he won't be playing the caped crusader in Reeves' film. This has actually been backed up by multiple reports that Reeves is meeting with other actors about the role, most notably you probably remember that Jake Gyllenhaal reportedly had a meeting with the director, uh, but we've heard some other names tossed around too, like Ryan Gosling for example. The kicker is, all of those actors are younger than Affleck. So, how do you square a younger actor replacing an older one in the cowl? The simplest answer is really, really obvious. You make these movies prequels. But why is this the best path? Well, the first argument that comes to my mind is age. You know, the Batman of the DCEU was intentionally made to be a veteran on the other side of 40. You know, a decision specifically geared towards Snyder's vision of adapting aspects of The Dark Knight Returns for Batman v Superman. Recasting with a younger actor creates a plot hole that has to be addressed. You know, how do the Cape Crusaders suddenly get, you know, 5, 10, 15 years younger? You know, well, setting the film as a prequel basically completely takes that problem out of the equation. Another big plus to the prequel argument is that you don't have to worry about quote-unquote replacing Affleck. You know, yes, of course, the actor would be recast, and the role of Batman on the big screen would pass to yet another actor. In fact, this would be the 10th actor to play Batman in a movie, if you count Lewis Wilson, Robert Lowry, and Jack Smith from the three earliest adaptations in the 40s and the 60s. But in this case, recasting wouldn't be the hard replacement that we've seen from previous Batman films, like when Kilmer took over for Keaton or Clooney took over for Kilmer. The actor would just be playing a younger version of Affleck's Batman, although probably early enough in his career that there would be room for them to make it their own. Third, the universe is already set up that the DCEU's Batman at some point in the past looked more like the Batman that most fans wanted to see. You know, in Batman v Superman specifically we see this when we see the destroyed and desecrated Robin suit on display in the Batcave. You know, that's not to say at one point Affleck was Adam Westing out and dancing the Batusi with a Burt Ward, but it does seem to hint that there was a simpler time for the Dark Knight when he wasn't so bitter and jaded. And of course, last but not least, there's also the added benefit that this essentially pleases everybody. I mean, you know, fans that loved Affleck and Zack Snyder's vision for this cynical Bruce Wayne get to see how that character got to be that way without overriding or erasing what Affleck did in BVS and Justice League. And fans that hated Affleck get basically an entirely new chance at the character in a new trilogy of films. But on the negative side, there are more than a few wrinkles that kind of make the prequel idea a little bit of a harder sell. First, Batman is arguably, I would say he is, the most popular superhero in the world and one of the most popular characters in fiction of all time. And on the face of it, Affleck being out very likely in a Reeves trilogy therefore being a prequel with a different actor means no Batman in the present day DCEU. Now, this might not be as much of an issue as it seems on the face of it. I mean, initially the plan was for the franchise to be full steam ahead on Justice League 2 right now, but given how the first one turned out, it seems like DC is pumping the brakes on that idea. So having Batman exist only in solo movies might not be the worst idea, or even the most far-fetched, because it seems like DC's new strategy is to put more of an emphasis on standalone films, at least for the time being, getting these characters built up, and then potentially crossing them back over down the road. And in that vein, the only other negative I can really think of is not actually a negative. It's more of just a hurdle. It's a problem that they'll have to solve at some point. You know, at some point, eventually, they're going to have to bring the young Bruce back to the present day. And of course, there are multiple ways they can do this already kind of set up in-universe. You could have the Flash time travel, for example. That's the biggest one that we've already seen him do. Uh, but, you know, there's another option here. Maybe Bruce dies. Maybe he's resurrected by the Lazarus Pit and comes back younger and slightly more, you know, Gosling-y or Gyllenhaal-y or something like that. 
Let me know what you think about this idea in the comment section down below, and if you're on board with this plan to have Reeves Trilogy be a prequel trilogy, personally, I think it's the easiest way to go about it, rather than just replacing Affleck and then potentially pissing off a lot of people that really enjoyed him in that role. I think this pays tribute to the actor, this pays tribute to what he did with the character, but it also solves the problem that he doesn't want to play the character anymore. That's gonna do it for me here, though. Thanks for watching. Don't forget to smash that like if you like what you saw, subscribe for more great content every single day, and consider turning on your notifications to be alerted every time we upload a new video. Signing off, this is CJ, and I'll see you next time.